That's somebody that I didn't catch who. <laughs> we'll find out in turn one. Where'd the countdown go away? I don't like that. Down again. Well, all right. Well, I mean, I guess reintroduction. Portuguese Grand Prix, Arc Formula Three Championship. Codemasters doesn't know how to program a bloody lobby half the time, so we have to restart everything. And we're getting right into the formation lap. Allegedly, there we go. There we go. So Looks like we've got a clear race in terms of uh, the weather. Yeah, it's probably cloudy if I remember right. As we uh, run through the grid order. From qualifying, in case those who missed the qualifying broadcast, it is uh, Carlo Durante, Darius McGill on the front row, Chloe Glennon, James Sands, Jamie Nock, Bill Nowak, mm. Fidel Fabian, Jake Scarborough, Harley Collins, I keep calling him Harvey, uh, Jackson Tate, and I don't know his first name, something. Giatri is uh, in the McLaren starting last. I just really hope they're a bit sensible going into the first corner. Uh, I don't care if they're sensible, I just hope they don't bring out a safety car lap one. Oh, no, they. Um, unlikely, it's very, very difficult for um, any type of safety car at Portimao. It would have to be a major wreck on the main straight. You underestimate this league's power, Setchel. I know, but there's, there's enough runoff that safety cars shouldn't really be a factor. Exit of four. Could usually make a safety car too. Hit somebody, hits that inside wall. Wow, this camera is very far away from the grid. I feel like I'm looking at the start. I feel like I'm looking at the grid from like all the way back in Barcelona. <laughs> Here we go. Five red lights slid up on the top of the screen. And we are green for the AF3 Portuguese GP. Looks like they're going to be just about at a dead heat going into one for the lead. Outside lane is preferable and around oh, goes Darius McGill. Either may have been some collision. Or maybe he just overcooked it. It's hard to say for sure. I had the helicopter angle. So. Let's bring up the position change. Uh, excellent start for Bill Nowak. He's already up to third from starting sixth on the grid. Looks like Fabian got the upper hand on James Sands going through turn five. Uh, James not with the best of starts. I don't know whether the car bogged down or his tires went up to temperature, but struggled to get away off the line, and he's just been mugged off by both of the Red Bulls as soon as the lights went out. Uh, well, the second Red Bull's not ahead of him at the moment. Yeah, but he's he's enough to be giving him a hard time. <laughs> Either way, they've been jumped by both the Ferraris as well, so 
I uh, hope in the long run he can claw some of that time back. So this is a very interesting uh, <clears throat> secondary perspective because obviously Petchel here is rooting for the Alpine drivers because that's literally his team. Uh, my, my team is not in the series, so I'm a 98% unbiased peer. I mean, I used to have the Red Bull drivers on my team, but that's neither here nor there. No, I'm not biased in the way that um, I'm going to start saying everything in their favour, but, you know, I would like them to get a good result. Well, yeah, well, I mean, uh, yeah, the... I get that, but like, you know, the point is you're going to be bringing them up in a different, different attitude because they are your drivers, they are your favorites. It's just on different expectations. <laughs> As well, of course, the second lap oh, is no, always was that? That's probably unbuckled going through there that run up to the. Uh... The last left-hander, sometimes the car just likes to do untoward things and the suspension just quits, so I imagine that's what just happened to her. Yeah, it was a completely isolated instant, the car just thrown in and now the rear tires that have been overheated, she not, not been able to get the car pointed the right way, had to reset to track. Which I Surely think is a get... DQ. Yeah, that was definitely a reset to track. Um, luckily no... Uh, the McLaren ahead had already passed, so no traffic coming, but uh, it's only probably the start of a very long race of pain for the Williams driver. Well, no, I think that's actually a disqualification, I'm pretty sure. If it's a manually activated reset, that's not allowed. Yeah, it definitely was a reset. I was, I was on board with it. It's not DRS, it's enabled. I was about to say the second lap is always the worst lap of the Grand Prix because it's the only one that doesn't have DRS available. But, um, we had that anyway, so it wasn't a complete, that wasn't complete nothing. As... Uh, the Haas is round. Jackson Tate's already pretty detached from the field, so that's, that's just, uh, piling on the misery more than anything else. Yeah, now DRS is going to be enabled heading towards turn one. Even though turn one's almost like a Schrodinger's passing zone, it's it is a passing zone, but not really. It is one where I think you need to make the overtake before you actually get to the corner. You can yes. go too wide easily, but you need a lot of trust and a fair bit of skill between two drivers. And in AF three I don't want to say that we're not gonna find that, but it's it's certainly harder to come by. Maybe an AF1 will find, you know, will find overtakes there that happen cleanly and impressively, but for now I feel like it's just better saved for five. Well, having said that, I've not noticed any major problems, even from last week with the um, AF3 lot. They, they do race hard, and it doesn't seem to be out of recklessness, it just seems to be out of amateur ability. Basically, they're all trying to learn what they can and can't do to some extent. There's also a bit of proving that proving oneself involved as well. You know, you're in AF3 because you want to prove that you should be in AF2 a lot of times. Yeah, if we're on board with um, Fidel though, he's definitely close enough to be giving um, Jamie Nook a hard time. Oh no. I think one of the McLaren's went for a spin and has collected the Williams in the second sector. I'm sure I, as a steward, will later probably see if that incident is actually worthy of a five second penalty collision. Collision penalty. I don't think so. I, I noticed the, <laughs> the McLaren had lost it. And uh, as soon as the Williams come by, made contact. It's, it's very rare that those incidents. Uh, are justified with that kind of penalty. You know, as I saw, as I watched on board with Fidel Fabian, the two Ferraris are actually battling for P2. And Nowak got a time penalty for trying to avoid crashing into said teammate. Thing is, with Nowak, though, 
he's got a hell of a lot more battery than the guys around him, but the back end already stepping out. Did he qualify in mediums? I don't remember that. Who, Bill? Yeah, I don't... Yeah, he, he definitely did. Oh, I, I guess I just assumed everyone started on sauce. No, the same with um, Harley Collins as well, he's uh, also on the mediums. Apart from that, I think Evan also was on the soft, so I don't know who's got in P11. I don't know. Oh, one of McLaren's is miles off in the gravel. I don't know why people have any issues with that corner. It's like that corner where they keep spinning in the second sector. Why is one of the cars off That's Harley Collins off the final corner? He like so caught the curb right. in the last corner or something? That's about all I can think. It's, it's a very impressive mistake to be that far off in the runoff. I just hope the car's okay. Uh, car looks fine. I don't think he hit anything. As Giatri just got a 10 second penalty for being off the track on the outside doing about 40 miles an hour. I don't really know if that was needed. <clears throat> I think the McLaren's trying to like find the city of El Dorado or something. So I wouldn't expect Portimao to be a track with a bunch of DRS train issues, and yet here we are with the five car train for P2. It wouldn't really be a problem if it was any other track, it's just this final corner, the dirty airs that much, they just lose, it's not really momentum, but they all spread out, so when the DRS is active, they get close, but they don't really get close enough to overtake. I mean, um, what about, it doesn't have, exactly have the longest stri uh, main street on the calendar either, despite oh the um, high speed uh, coming out of the final corner, and there's a move up into P3. It was a bit uh, ugly though, and oh wow, they were three wide through turn four. James Sands tried to exist in space that was being occupied by a two wide battle. Fidel did kind of move Nowak over a tiny bit. I don't really know if that's exactly in the bounds, but I also didn't see if Nowak maybe squeezed him onto that curb, which would therefore actually make it the Ferrari's fault, if it was the case. It, it wasn't done on purpose, um, Red Bull just... Uh, the back end stepped out on traction. Oh. Yeah, in that heat point of battle, uh, issues can arise with uh, people assuming that they're going to keep fighting and you try and pick up the pieces as uh, James has done, but then you don't want to be caught in the aftermath of anything. Yeah, James almost found the sand because. Uh, well, Nowak and Fabian started understeering through four, and if they continued at pace, they were just going to go right through that Alpine. As all that conflict has really helped uh, Jamie Nock get away from, well, that's not helping, but he was getting away from all of the chaos. But he's still uh, so oh away. James my is word! That a... is uh, almighty send, and it didn't really get the result. He was definitely right to send it there, but Fidel just too close alongside. Oh, no, 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 no. That is too much throttle input. And that no, is a... he got taken out. Oh. That looked weird from my... I was on board with him, so I didn't see what happened from behind, as we once again have a McLaren trying to find Kimi Raikkonen at Interlagos in 2012. Uh, Fidel just stuck his nose in as they were going through the corner, and it pivoted the Alpine. Oh, no, Fidel was the one ahead of him. That would have been... Limits. Fidel was the one ahead of him, Scarborough was the one that hit him, if anyone did. I know it was a Red Bull. And it was Scarborough, because I don't know how Fidel could have stuck his nose in on the inside of the Alpine while ahead of that Alpine. 
It'd be quite impressive. I know that that will be definitely one looked into. They both broke their wings, so they're both gonna kind of come out at a not necessarily net zero, but it didn't really help either one. As I think almost every single car on this racetrack right now has a penalty of some description. And even the guys who don't have penalties, I'm sure they've got warnings. Yeah, I'd be very surprised. Uh, Durante at the lead might not, because he hasn't really had to be like under pressure from anything. He's been just having like a little joyride session up at the front. Oh, he does. He's one warning away from a penalty. Oh, okay, never mind. <laughs> Even uh, Fidel with two warnings. Yeah, if, if they don't have a penalty, they're one warning away from getting one. Oh my goodness gracious, that was... <laughs> oh no. Well, that's going to be a penalty later, I feel like. Actually, I don't really know. It's certainly going to be looked at, and it's right on stream, but uh, that Haas just broke the leader's front wing. Really? Yeah. He didn't uh, He didn't really move out of the way on the front straightaway, and broke earlier for one than you really have to, and that the, the, just broke off the, part of the leader's flags, wing. Blue flags would definitely be in effect by then, wouldn't they? Yeah, he was like, he got DRS off the Haas, doesn't that trigger that? Uh, yeah, but... Uh, I don't remember, it didn't pop up on my screen, but I mean... Again, I feel like that's going to be worked out for stewarding me in the future. Right now, I'm not exactly concerned. Not about whether it's a penalty or not, I'm more concerned about whether, you know... This will obviously have an adverse effect on the GP. Because that's gifted the 1-2 position to these Ferraris. Well, for the time being, Fidel Fabian might have something to say, but... The thing is with Fabian, he's definitely in a very good position to capitalize on this. I'm yes. hoping for the sake of the Mercedes as well, not a lot of ground has been lost because of the gap uh, they had already. And it's will only be a minor undercut, probably a little bit of time lost as well with the wing change. It, I think... should, be, or it should be okay. Is it salvageable from there? It's a net loss of I would say about twelve seconds between the wing change and the time loss, or probably like fifteen between the fixed wing and the uh, well, just the time loss from not having a wing and having to go all the way around the course. Yep. Oh, back end stepped out though. Collins is here. And Collins will just have to wait. Oh, it's a lot of a lot of grass. I didn't know yeah. Renault made lawn mowers. Does he send it? Oh, he certainly does. Uh, but the door was closed. Please don't. Please don't. Sensible. Oh, As, there's a VSC. Oh, it's As... still He's crashed in the pit wall at the <laughs> pit entry. A safety car. Full safety car. And you said we wouldn't have any. <laughs> I didn't plan on people driving into the pit wall. <laughs> You under, you have to expect the unexpected, Satchel. <laughs> oh, he's, he's not, he's not hit the pit wall. He's managed to bin it in the right-hand barrier on the way into the pits. So he might have, I guess, hooked the outside curb of the last turn. That's about the only possibility I can think of. As Collins gets a penalty under the safety car, Delta. Let's see, I assume everyone's gone on to... Oh, no, actually. Uh, oh, yeah, mediums can probably go from here. And Scarborough... Stacked on top of his misery, he gets a speeding penalty under the safety car. Fidel's taken the conservative approach, however, I feel like it may also be the slightly wrong approach on the hard tires. I guess it could work. It's not a bad idea. It'll definitely work. It just won't be as effective. He's going to have to 
really... Especially if there's another safety car for any reason, they'd be screwed. Yeah. Well, if it's late enough in the race, it's another safety car just puts everybody on soft tires and go to the end. But that would have to... That would mean we'd have to go another 11, 12 left without a safety car, which, I mean, that should happen, considering, as you described, the nature of this track's barrier locations. What has he done? How has he binned it behind the safety car? I think Ericsson hit him. No, he's lost it on his own. <laughs> Just like Grosjean did. That's the joke. He seems to have found turn four. I guess that might be a little weirder of a corner when you're not at full speed. Sometimes driving an F1 car slowly is harder than driving it fast due to, well, downforce. As Fidel and Bill go into the pits again. Well, Bill makes sense because he hadn't pit before. I don't really know why Fidel's re-entered the pits. I think he's certainly lost. Oh, there's another speeding penalty, this time for Jackson Tate, who's already way in the back anyway. So... <laughs> So, well, okay, well, Nowak didn't have a choice. He started on those mediums. So, basically, they just switched places. So now Fidel has the mediums on, and Bill has the hards. Interesting. Um, anyhow, as it looks like, uh, yep, uh, Jamie, you're supposed to be behind that, my friend. Ultimately, that safety car is uh, given a uh, Carlo Durant a uh, get out of jail free card because he's already back into second place and in a position where he can just take the lead back with all the pace he's shown throughout this GP. Oh, Chloe. Has... How is... How have you spun the there? The same thing as Holly Collins did, but at least Collins was a bit further around the corner. I don't know if it's anything to do with the tyre temperatures. Because you know, I'd imagine any guys on the hard tyre not going to be up to temperature and you're gonna lose grip and you're definitely gonna lose traction. What's happening there guys? Why are you so down? Jackson Tate has just tried to let the leaders go as he's a lap down but the game is yelling at them at the cars he's letting go that they have to stay behind him. Mm. So that's basically separated the uh, top three and everybody else by five seconds because of that madness. McGill went for a send on the outside of Durant, but uh, did not produce an overtake. That was, that was that was the new one. There's been certainly a lot of new ones in this Grand Prix. I'm just a bit lost for words because. Uh... It's not fair on the guys who were behind all of that. Yeah, Jackson Tate thought we were in NASCAR where the lapped cars under caution do have to move for the cars on the lead lap, but here that doesn't really do that. All you had to do, if we really wanted to let them by, just get to the main straight then pull to one side. It's not difficult. I can't believe that some people don't know that. best offering at that is he doesn't play this game too often, but that's not really an excuse. I literally have not done a single league race on this game in person, driving a car, and I knew that. So we're going to have a battle into turn one for the lead of the GP. Knock is kind of forced off the track. We tried to send it back on the outside, but uh, Carlo just, just about closed that door off. First thing mm. he can do is maybe try and hold up that McLaren for his teammate. Maybe that's quite a tall order. It is a four second gap between them. However, if the McLaren's having corner exits like that, it makes it a tiny bit easier. I 
Oh, that's another crash. Maybe. Jackson it Tate. Could, could be a safety car again. Wouldn't surprise me. He's just dead on the opposite end of the front straightaway. It's not like, like, what could he have done? How could he have hit a wall over there? You can't. To bin it there, you'd have to do it on purpose. Hmm. We're having an absolutely gar gargantuan oversteer moment, but like that would just be impressive even at that point. What no, the? I'm supposed to run the safety car. Oh anyway. my oh, no. god! McLaren just smashed into it. And, and now we do have a safety yeah, car. Yeah, that's definitely a safety car. That's like Formula Two Jetta start sort of thing. <laughs> Scrubber with more speeding penalties. <sighs> yep, that's a new one. So, with where his car was positioned, I'm thinking he might have oversteered on the exit of the last turn, hit the inside wall, and bounced back to where he was. Because he was missing a wheel. That was obviously a crash. That wasn't a manual retirement, because where that car was. The two leaders barely avoided but the McLaren could not react, because that car was conveniently placed at the top of the hill. So no one could really see it. You had about one second to jerk the wheel to the right and avoid that stricken car, which obviously that McLaren failed to do. And I feel like this is too early for soft tires to go to the end, so... Yeah, the barely at half race distance softs I think at most they could go 14 they're, they're really really pushing it yeah I think if you're doing more than 12 on soft tires you should be on the mediums yeah it's like if you plan to go more than 10 laps go on the mediums more than 20 than the hards softs will easily do 10 laps around here but yeah <laughs> I think if softs can easily do 10 you should be, you know, doing them for 10. If you're doing more than 10, you shouldn't be on them. No, it's, it's track dependent though. Like, I know the softs can... Well, I'm referring I know, to... I know, I know they can go 14, but any more than that, then you might as well be on the mediums. Because then after 14, you will lose time. And after 16, you, that's when you're going to risk them coming off the rim. So I would say if this were lap 20, then... Maybe soft tires. Anything earlier than that, and you want mediums. It's non negotiable. Yeah, James has made the right call at least. He's gone for fresh set mediums, as is Jamie Nook. Not I don't sure. think there's anybody on the grid right now that's made the wrong call because everybody has tires that I think can get to the end from here. Yeah, I'm just a little bit hesitant with um, Bill Nook being on the hards and how well this safety car restart will go for him. Better than a for Scarborough, who's on the same compound, but they're older for him. The only one that I'm really uh, questioning whether they can make it to the end of the Grand Prix is Durant, but these safety cars have allowed him to save tire a little bit, I'm sure, so I don't think you'll have any issues. Five laps, yeah, that's nothing, though. those mediums could go to the end. Maybe. They're, they're going to feel horrible, but I think they'll only just make it. Uh, do you know what the rule is for... Because um, we've had quite a few DNFs, and we could still have more if we're going to let those guys uh, be eligible for points. I don't know whether it's by distance or if they actually need to finish the race. Uh, no, right now the only driver that's not scoring anything is the car that's 11th. Everyone will score otherwise. You don't have to finish the race to score because that would just be unfair for a driver that gets taken out and is demoted to like ninth place. Fair enough. And, I, well, I mean... It would never happen, really, in modern-day F1, but I'm pretty sure that's how it would work in real-life F1. If we got to such a desperate position where we had more than half of the field crash.
tend to assume the safety car will be in momentarily. Yeah, I think uh, as they go downhill, the moment they go up the hill again is when the safety car will pull away. Right, Anki. Jake already serving one of his drive throughs. Oh, Jamie Nook has been sent round. Based on Jonathan Light is pushing his luck um, with Fidel. But Fidel didn't do anything wrong. I think it was one time too many before I were trying to stick it to the car on the outside, and there's only, you know. Car loop space, you can't keep pushing them before the car on the outside will begin to push back. Yeah, eventually they have to make the next corner too, and considering it's a double right hander, you have to cut down eventually. Or, heaven yeah, knows, you'll end up getting a penalty for track extending because you've been put out there, and Codemasters doesn't seem to understand that. Yeah. He's going to need some sort of miracle draft to pull down that eight second gap. I think he'll have the pace to, but it's going to be more work than probably worth his time. No DRS at the moment, so we're going to have to wait a bit for this uh, all this pent up action to, you know, explode out of control, as it were. Unless there are errors committed or somebody's really found pace, there's not going to be any overtakes for the moment. And saying that, no whack on. Uh, yeah, not, not there on pace uh, going through the lower speed corners. The hard tyres looking like they're struggling to get down on traction. As Durant has absolutely checked out, he's already pulled a, about a second and a half, and we're only, we haven't even completed two safe or like two green laps. At this distance, Fidel might actually have a chance for an overtake here, if he decides he can take it. Oh, Nowak's not even fighting it. Probably because DRS just got enabled, so he's just gonna get it going towards 5, which is the better passing zone anyhow. But, I mean, style points for the Red Bull driver. He got the outside of one, and nobody crashed. But now there's that DRS, and Fidel maybe. Oh, no, no whack thinks better of that. And so our adventure carries on to the next lap, if no whack can even hang on to the back of that Red Bull. The hard tires probably not going to be doing him any good right now. <coughs> also depends on how much pressure that Alpine's putting on him too. Bill may not be able to focus on trying to take second back when he's got this Alpine breathing down his neck. Good. <laughs> to be fair, I think James is doing a really good job so far to come back from what he's already been through. Didn't have the greatest I know corner he, there. He, he, will, he will want a podium out of this. And uh, I know that him and Bill Noak, they, they don't have the friendliest of rivalries. 
Oh boy. Believe me, James will want that Ferrari behind him by the end of the race. It just depends, sir. Uh... A little bit nervous for the Alpine though, uh, back end stepping out quite a bit going through turn 4. Be a possible, uh, or not possible, probable uh, destruction throughout the day. I'm not alone in my house. My mom just walked by and I had to beat the microphone for that because she spent the entire thing not awake and mumbling. <laughs> Very interesting to work around that for AF2 where I won't have a co-commentator to fill in the gaps while I can't talk. Are you expected to do comms for all of the races today? Yep. I hope you're getting paid for it. <laughs> I am not. Oh mate, you, you should ask. No, we have to do three races in the rope for free. The fuck? Jamie up with a penalty. You should buy James Sands a little bit of time if those two ever get near each other again. Apparently everybody on my friends list is going online right now. So if you're getting a bunch of black boxes on your screen, viewers, uh, that'd be why. Scarborough with a penalty, he's not exactly relevant in this scenario anyway, so... Nowak is apparently feeling the pressure, but his uh, efforts to stay ahead of Sands have just caught him up to Fidel <laughs> instead. He's in a really difficult position because he needs to stay in the position to attack the Red Bull when his hards eventually come into play, but also try and fend off the Alpine behind. Uh, looks like the move might be made here. Fidel's out of ERS. Sands thought about going in on both of them, but that's a terrible idea. Nah, I'll, I'll just sense it. <laughs> I'm sure you would have. <laughs> yeah, thing is, I, I would have probably made it work. <laughs> oh, is James gonna have a look on the Red Bull? Because oh, Fidel he's... has got next to no battery. No, that that's that's fine. They're only following the flow of the track. Fidel chose that line. And now he finally gets his own penalty, probably a little flustered from losing those places. So yeah, now I definitely wasn't expecting that, like, about a lap ago. Yeah, the, just the uh, battery being drained out of the Red Bull, which has lost any momentum to try and fend off an attack. Whereas I would say maybe his tires are... I would also say maybe his tires are already kind of losing a bit of pace, but I don't really think so. I feel like that's another couple of laps in the future before the mediums are starting to show their age. For sure, they'd feel a little bit aware by now, but nothing that will Not that. lose him that, that much performance. Like, look at it, he's already lost a second. But I fear that's down to a um, battery. Bill Norrick going defensive, he's moving back across. James making his intentions very clear. He's dented down the inside into turn one. What an absolute unit, but he's got to fend him off in the next couple of corners and a DRS zone. Because Bill Norak will... He's got uh, the space and the battery to make an attack. Hope James can try go defensive, but <laughs> Bill Norak thinks otherwise. Yeah, Bill doesn't even make an attempt. He wasn't even on the battery. <laughs> no, no, oh, no, 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 he's no, looped. No, he saved it. Like. But... That was traction going. Yeah, that I've was just that a uh, gas. Um, Jim, he needs to calm down. He's going to be so annoyed with that. <laughs> it's 
it's not not really much more that you can do. I'm surprised that he's not really pulled back any time on that either. Yeah, now we're now all three of them are just kind of in a bit of a a no man's land. It's not even a DRS train; it's just a small line of cars. And this this helps Jamie though. Now that they're out of DRS range, it'll be even easier for him to catch back up if he's got the pace for it. Which, considering he's taken that gap between him and Fidel to three seconds, I'm thinking he does. Jimmy made a little bit of ground up, but I think he's had to get a bit more confidence back in the car, knowing that he can drive it the last 20 odd laps the same way and have the back end not step out on him. <clears throat> so I don't think he's going to get DRS on this occasion though, he's going to be just outside the window. And Durant continues to pound in fast laps. It's like his tires are wearing in reverse up there. I think by this time next lap, uh, Jamie Nock might be uh, knocking on that Red Bull's door. Now I think his medium tires are beginning to wear out too, so that's just only making things worse for him. That was a good exit out of uh, turn five. Is that a hairpin turn five? Yeah. Yes. And James actually gained about three tenths on the Ferrari. Then come the high speed corners and the dirty air, he just loses it again. To come back from this, he ideally he needs to be within DRS and he's painfully close. Still gonna miss it by a tenth unless he has a really good corner here. He needs a good drop out of this corner. Doesn't seem yeah. like he's gotten it. Uh, yeah. Someone who is is uh, Jamie Knox finally re-entering the picture on that Red Bull. Uh, the issue for Jamie is that he has hardly any battery. It's just gonna be a bit of a DRS carry. He should make the overtake. But going through into turn three, I do expect the Red Bull to come back. And he will see the light flashing on the Ferrari, so he'll know he'll be vulnerable down into the hairpin. Well, the Red Bull doesn't exactly have a full charge either. He's not much higher. And he didn't get a great exit out of four, so he's not going to be anywhere near. I think attention turns back now oh, no, to... Oh, no, there we go. <laughs> he's, he's, um, the Ferrari did exactly the same thing as James and lost it on traction. That just delays the inevitable, in my mind, but... <laughs> cut, cut, retake that scene, I guess. Once again, Sands continues to remain in that painful, like, 1.1, 1.2 window where you just can't... If you could get DRS even once, it would change the... It would change the construct of this battle, but he just can't... Can't get there. Be interested to see how close he can try and get down the main straight. Even that all the way down, it's like 1.1. .1. It's a bit impressive that surely him and Bill they'll be putting in similar lap times to each other. Oh no, he span, he span at the first corner. Oh my god, that was close. All right, well Rest James has just made his life bad. even more difficult. Now he's got to get around both of them, Fidel. Puts up no resistance to that, so now he's just got to get back around the Ferrari. <laughs> and I think that um, Jamie does have an extra penalty, so 
Jim should still get a podium out of this. Because I don't think Fidel's going to play a factor here. His tires are uh, starting to fall off the cliff, so... Is uh, four to go. I feel like the top two are pretty much confirmed at this point. The final podium finisher is still up for grabs. That's basically going to be between James and Jamie. The Jamie and the James and James show, technically, if we forego nicknames. Just keep the camera on the Alpine driver probably until the end of the GP because this is like the only place worth looking at the moment. Are you hearing you on your phone in the background? <laughs> yeah, so I have, I have someone messaging me. Oh. I thought you started like playing Candy Crush on me or something. <laughs> no. James is painfully close again within DRS of the Ferrari. I know that much. Ultimately, he doesn't have to worry about that though. He's gonna end up with that third place from here anyway, so long as he doesn't make any mistakes. They have the exact same tires and tire wear, so it's basically just down to, you know, just taking it to the finish. Once again, further evidence that Carlo Durant's tires are wearing backwards, because he just seems to keep getting faster. Yeah, look at the tire wear, I'm just looking for any... I know that Bill Noak it would be unlikely that he'd win the race from this point, but I'm trying to see whether the hards could bring that gap down. I think they are. He, he, he will just run out of time for it. I think the finishing order is basically set. You know, ignore the fact that the penalty is going to put Sands ahead of uh, Knock, but I have noticed that uh, Jake Scarborough has put on a set of soft tires. He's probably going to go after uh, fastest lap here on the final circuit. Fast lap at the minute of 119.2. Actually, the same as his own fastest lap. Yeah, and then mind you that that, well now it's a 19-1 from Bill Nowak, so I, I guess there's throwing down the gauntlet for Jake. You should definitely know what he's aiming for with that. It can't be that hard, surely. This late in the race, the cars are going to be incredibly light. And, you know, fresh soft versus a time set on 19 lap old hards. It should 
It should be in quite easily. Should. Should. And it's suddenly Sands and uh, that Ferrari driver are way closer together. And it looks like James is going to do it on the track. Or try. Unsuccessfully. Yeah, Jura is still set in purple sectors though. See if he comes across the line for the win. If the... Uh... If it will be the fastest lap at the same time. So yeah, Carlo Durant's going to, at the very least, win the Grand Prix. Jake just got time penalty on his attempted flying lap, so I think that's kind of discounting that anyway. And it's an 18-8 on those old medium tires, so... Durant won that with pace to spare, to say the least. It's going to be a drag race on track, at least for P3. Yeah, Jake's going to beat it swimmingly with an 18 flat, however, I don't really know if we count that with a time penalty or not. So that is your Portuguese Grand Prix for ARC Formula 3. With uh, Carlo Durant taking the win, honestly, it never really seemed in doubt, despite the lapped traffic's best efforts to make the race more interesting. Do you want time for a podium interview, or do you not want to? I don't do those. If you want to run those yourself, you can, but I don't really do questions too well. I'm not really feeling it today, because before AF2, I, I need to run to the store quickly. And yeah, I've never done podium interviews in the entire time I've spent commentating the Arc Formula series, so why start now, I guess? We did it last week. Why well, else wasn't here last week? So. I would do better if I wasn't being pushed for time. Yeah, so that'll uh, that'll do it for the Arc Formula Three Championship from Portugal. Uh, and well, <laughs> come back here in about uh, half an hour or so from now, and it'll be just me with the AF2 Championship from the same racetrack, just with some different people.